curiosity. It's always gotten the better of me. I've always wondered, how do people do that? Which often leads me on a path of exploration and learning, which isn't always successful. The video before you follows my journey from knowing nothing about Portal to finally releasing my first completed Hammer project on the workshop, a journey which spans six years. My name is Nock. Welcome to the making of intro. Ten forty four AM, December second, twenty fourteen. Why is this important? Well, it was on this day that I discovered a game franchise I'd never heard of nor seen before, Portal. I was introduced to the world of Aperture Science when my COD Zombies buddy at the time, Rowan, pointed me in the direction of the Valve Complete Pack 2013. For only $18.99, I now owned a total of 28 products in my library. And what was the first one I played? Portal 2. I was instantly hooked, and it wasn't long before I discovered the experience was extended thanks to the community workshop. Portal 2 became my primary streaming and YouTube game, and after countless hours playing other people's maps, I decided to take the plunge and start making maps for myself. My first map, playing with map tools, was something that I managed to knock together in about 45 minutes live on stream, with the help of then stream regulars Bee Master and Radioactive Owl. Honestly, it was your normal first map experience, lots of white surfaces and some very cheesy moves. Although I was on the workshop, I still felt like there was more that I wanted to achieve. I played maps from the likes of Jose Pez, Rectorox and Skyferret to name a few, which left me curious as to how they'd made their maps, as they weren't your standard puzzle maker outputs. So in 2016, I decided to look at the portal authoring tools and its Hammer World Editor to see what I could make. I'd previously had some mapping experience in Unreal Editor back in my days of university. And by experience, I really mean sitting there for an hour, placing a couple of brushes and not really knowing what I was doing. So I knew this wasn't going to be something that I'd quickly master or learn. However, with the help of many people across the portal community, I was able to make things work and start developing my skills. Over the next five years, I dabbled in and out of Hammer and have countless maps and projects, all of which were started, but never come into fruition. Sometimes it was me being over ambitious and biting off more than I could handle, such as Aperture Kidnap, a four chamber map with a full blown story and Easter egg side quest. I guess that's the Call of Duty zombie player in me. Other times it was a case that the map was broken and my lack of experience couldn't fix things. Other times it was just me being me in that I tried to take on too much at a time and expect results far too quickly. Or sometimes it was designing the rooms first before adding in the puzzle afterwards, which would just lead to a whole nightmare. However, most of the time, it was a sheer lack of confidence that my work wasn't good enough. In my opinion, there comes a certain level of expectation and skill when you make a map with Hammer, and most of my projects just didn't meet those self-expected standards. In a total, I've started 23 maps and released zero, silch, nothing. Discounting a couple of Puzzle Maker exports I've uploaded with some minor hammer tweaks, the only hammer contribution on the workshop can be seen on Aaron's Edgeless Remastered map, where I did some antline logic work for him, but that's really it. That was until 2022. On February 4th, 2022, I made a commitment during a live stream to start working on a new map. I decided that if I could commit to making a map on stream, I would have made a commitment to the viewers and that would be something that I wouldn't want to break. A couple of months before this, I'd released a new workshop map called Deferral, which contained an introduction room. And I thought to myself, it's a simple room that I could take into Hammer and work on to see what I could come up with. I also decided I wasn't going to follow one of the design styles for the chamber, as I'd felt I'd be under too much pressure to make sure everything was right. So I was just going to go in and do something. So the development process started and straight away I did something that I'd never done before. I created the puzzle and elements first before fleshing out the detail and geometry of the room. 
Why I've never worked like this before is beyond me, and is certainly a workflow that I'll take with me into future projects. By the end of the second stream, the chamber was in a working state where you could run through it and solve the puzzle. So now it was time to change the layout a bit and give it that little bit of something extra. Initially, I was keen on using panels to create a staircase which would lead the player up to the exit area rather than using a piston platform. So I put them in place on the map. However, given the narrow nature of the chamber, the sideways stairs weren't sitting right with me. For it to work, I had to really push the exit area outside of the chamber bounds, but I felt this ruined the flow of the chamber a little. So I decided to put this on a bit of a back burner and see what else I could distract myself with. Uh oh, old habits creeping in again. The second change I made from the original map was to add a goo pit in the middle. In the original, the area where the exit button was, was on a raised ledge. But when I made this part in Hammer, I really didn't like the look of it. So I chopped out the ledge and added a goo pit. But it wasn't long before I realized this would add an extra complication. What if the player went over to the other side without the cube? Well, the short answer is, they would be stuck. So I had to come up with a way that the player could return to the other side. Initially, I was intending the player to use a portal surface on the exit side, where they could return via either the floor surface or the angled panel in the roof. The player would have to pass through a fizzler so they couldn't bring the cube across, which would be cheating. The area was sat under the raised section for the exit area, but much like the sideways stair problem, it stuck out and I felt like it ruined the flow of the chamber. So I soon canned that idea and I was back to the drawing board. I then came up with the idea of a return path. I carved a hole out of the wall near the dropper button and I made a passageway with some stairs which led up 128 units and the player could simply walk around and drop down to return. This was perfect, apart from the fact that where the return path started was also where the exit should be. Now the easy thing to say would be, well, why not have the return path on the other side of the chamber? But the reason I didn't want to do that was because I'd placed an observation room there, so there wasn't really any room to do the raised return path there. But who said the return path had to be raised? I began working on a return path on the other side of the map and initially came up with the idea that the player would travel in a small BTS area where they would end up in the observation room. From here, the player would break the glass in the room and have the ability to shoot a portal in the main room and in the observation room, allowing them to return to the chamber. It was perfect, as not only would it solve the problem, it would offer a bit of BTS, which is something that I've been trying to include in all my non-finished projects up until this point. I spent the best part of two streams working on this area, adding in catwalks and creating the route and making the BTS area. The problem was I was starting to feel like I'd maybe added too much and was starting to lack inspiration for this part of the mapping process. I took the decision to scale things back and instead I decided that I'd keep the path on the same level, which would go under the observation room and a secret panel would open in the wall to bring the player back into the chamber. It was such a simple solution, but it would still allow me to add some BTS to the map for the player to travel through. The first iteration was a little bland, however. Although I was happy with what I'd done, it lacked variation in the form of textures I'd used and it needed some more movement and life. I chopped out the whole of the middle of the return path and started adding in some vac tubes. With the help of Team Spen, absolute legend, I was able to get it all up and running and the movement was just what I wanted. Having now sorted the return path, I went back to the exit problem and conceded that using panel arms was too much of a headache for me at this point, so I added in a piston platform to keep everything nice and tidy. With that in place, it was time to get creative and start the detailing phase. This is probably my most hated part as I don't consider that I have an overly artistic side to me. I just began placing props and seeing where I could run from it. I was carving chunks out of walls to add in broken panel looks, taking inspiration from Mystical Ace's juxtapose map, even working with Ace to learn how to build some of the areas. I was creating broken ceiling with protruding struts with a Ratman type den up there. But the one item of detailing I spent the most time on were the cables in the vac tube BTS area. I was hell bent on getting some really nice looking shadows shining on the back panels in that area. So first, I just went random with the cables, 
adding them in wherever, and then I played around with the light map scale of the small section of textures to get a really nice looking shadow being cast on it. All right, it's a real subtle thing, and most people probably won't even notice it, but to me, it's one of my favorite parts of the map. From here, it was just a case of adding in more props here, more props there, and even adding in some special dynamic elements to the map, and then working on the texture variation on the walls and the ceilings. This was another area of dread for me, as I knew it involved chopping brushes to achieve the maximum variation, which could ultimately lead to leaks, my worst nightmare to fix. But after buckling down and just getting on with it, it was a relatively untroubling phase of the map development process. We were about there, but there was still one other thing that I decided this map needed, and that was its own music track. Ah yes, music. A map isn't complete without a bit of background music to listen to and solve to, right? Well, fun fact, the majority of my BMod made workshop maps don't actually feature music. I don't know why, but it's just something I've always turned off for some reason. It's kind of strange really, as for those of you who know me over the years, you'll know that I have quite a musical background. I do plan on releasing a video in the future covering my history of music, but that's a story for another day. Anyway, towards the end of the map development, I was sat with my son who was asking for some help with his music homework. He was using some online software to write his own music using some of the provided samples and wanted some feedback. So you know how I said at the top of this video that curiosity gets the better of me? Well, turns out I started playing around with this myself. Not content with the Hammer project I was already working on, I was now going to split my time between that and making music. I'll be honest, alarm bells were ringing in my head, as I know from experience, having multiple projects on the go at the same time turns to burnout and mismanagement of time, which ultimately turns to project failure. I'd had previous experience in Ableton, where experience means throwing in some samples, placing some notes on a MIDI instrument, and that's about it. So I roughly knew how most of the layouts worked with this one as it was similar. Before long, I created the track and I shared it around a couple of people and had some pretty positive feedback for a complete novice ayers. And then came the burning question, what would this sound like in the map? Well, the answer was maybe a little too heavy. So with some comments, I went back into the studio and created a version two track. The second iteration featured more pronounced, higher pitched melodies and some automation lanes on the chords to give a little bit of interest into the track. For me, this version was miles above the first, but it had the same problem. It was still too heavy to solve a chamber to. Instead, I took this version, chopped out some of the tracks and gave an overall more muffled and chilled vibe to it. It didn't feel too distracting. It was nice and subtle and something I'd happily solve a chamber to and is also what you're listening to right now. I also created a further version which removed the drums and was slightly more muffled still and I intended to use this as the funnel reprise. However, during testing I felt that the chamber reprise was still working well so I didn't include it in the map itself. But of course, I wasn't done there. No, that would be far too easy. After all, I'm known as being the master of complication. I'd had the idea of this video in my head since the inception of the project, so if I'd already made music to go to the map, why not try to make some other tracks to go with the video? So I hope you've been enjoying the music throughout. Let me know your thoughts. I plan on continuing to try to make music, so stay tuned for more tracks coming soon. On the face of it, many may look at intro and say, it's a bit simple and there's not much of a puzzle. But for me, it's the conclusion of a six year journey, which has finally come to an end. Will there be more Hammer projects in the future? I'm sure there will be. But for now, I'm just happy that I can draw a line under this and say I finally published a full Hammer map. I hope you've enjoyed me sharing this journey with you and I thank you all for your constant support to both me and the channel.
Oh, did I forget to mention there's a kind of Easter egg ARG quest included in this map? If you want to play along, all you need to do is find the activation spot. Once activated, you'll be able to play and see if you can solve it. There's things to find both inside the game and outside the game. Happy hunting!